let's uh, let's dive in and see if we can untangle the web of NOTAMs. D-NOTAMs or domestic NOTAMs, these are the most common type of NOTAMs and provide information concerning in route navigation aids, civil public use airports, seaplane bases, heliports, and related facilities. They cover things like runway closures, taxiway closures, airport lighting failures, and changes in navigational aids or nav aids. A NOTAM may state that the runway is closed for maintenance for a certain time on one day or to a certain time on another day. FDC NOTAMs, on the other hand, are issued by the Flight Data Center and contain information that is regulatory in nature. They typically include changes in instrument approach procedures, temporary flight restrictions or TFRs, amendments to published instrument flight rules or IFR charts, or other regulatory changes. They are crucial for IFR operations and might include changes to instrument approach procedures, airspace usage, or special flight restrictions. There's something called an SAA NOTAM or Special Activity Airspace NOTAMs. They're issued when special activity airspace such as military operation areas or MOAs, restricted areas or warning areas is active outside of normal published times. These NOTAMs inform pilots about the activation of airspace where military or other activities might be hazardous to civilian flights. For example, a restricted area that is usually inactive on weekends will be active for military training exercise during a specific period. There's also military NOTAMs. These NOTAMs pertain specifically to the military airports and operations. They are issued by the U.S. military and affect military airfield and activities. This includes information about military airfield conditions, military operations that might affect civilian flights, and any changes or closures at military installations. Now there's something called international NOTAMs. These are issued for international flights and provide information relevant to airspace and airports outside of the United States. International NOTAMs cover a wide range of information, including changes to airspace structures, international airport conditions, navigational aids, and temporary flight restrictions. For example, an international NOTAM might announce a temporary closure of an international airport or navigational aid that is out of service in a foreign country. Center Area NOTAMs these NOTAMs are issued to cover a large geographic area, typically involving in-route navigation aids, communication stations, or other facilities under the control of a specific ARTCC or Air Route Traffic Control Center. They provide information about in-route facilities that affect flights traversing various sectors of airspace managed by a particular ARTCC. NOTAMs follow a standardized format to ensure clear communications. It starts off with a NOTAM number, a unique identifier for each NOTAM, often including the year. The affected location is next, the airport, navigational aid, or airspace affected by the NOTAM. Then it follows up with the details of the notice, a concise but detailed description of what is being affected and the nature of the restriction or change. Then there's also a time period, the time frame during which the NOTAM is active. This can include the start and end times, dates, and whether the NOTAM is in effect 24 hours a day or only during certain periods. NOTAMs are absolutely important for pilots. Reviewing NOTAMs is essential during pre-flight planning to ensure that pilots are aware of any changes or restrictions that could affect their flight. Pilots should monitor NOTAMs, particularly FDC and SAA NOTAMs, which can impact the safety and legality of their flight. Understanding FDC NOTAMs is crucial for IFR flights as they might involve regulatory changes that could affect instrument approaches or airspace usage. Always, always, always just check the NOTAMs. Like, Seriously, check the NOTAMs. Be sure to like and subscribe this video. If you want to learn more about helicopters, I have a free course on getting started with helicopters. I also have a course on how to pay for flight school, and I also have a course on getting your private helicopter license. I'd love to help you out. Links are all down in the description below.